Hey guys, Nick from A Plus Auto Styling here with our first how-to video. This video will be on how to wrap a roof gloss black. Uh, for our demonstration, we're going to be using Avery Denison gloss black. Um, for anyone that wraps cars, obviously knows Avery is the easiest to work with, so it's kind of the easiest to demonstrate the way vinyl stretches and uh, you know all that stuff. So um, you know non wrappers can easily wrap their roof, you know, if they watch the video. So this is our first how-to video. So if I miss any spots, if I miss any crucial parts, please comment it. Otherwise, I'm going to try to hit everything. Um, we're going to show you everything from removing the roof rails to wrapping the antenna to post heating it at the end and making sure it actually looks good for longer than a few days, uh, which is very crucial with wraps. So, um, yeah, we're just going to get dived into it. We got a new WRX here. I think it's like a 2016 or 17 WRX. It's a white car, so it's going to show really nice contrast once it's all done. Um, got the nice carbon fiber hood on it, so all that will just kind of flow together. So, uh, yeah, we're going to start moving the roof rails, and then we're just going to start wrapping stuff. Made this, we're going to make this video mainly for uh, anyone around Bel Air or Harford County that is trying to wrap their car. That needs just a little help, you know, a little insight, you know. You know, why not? You guys know me, I know you. Watch the video, learn how to wrap your car. You know, that's the whole point of it. So, all right, we're gonna dive right into this. If you've got any questions, make sure you comment it. I'll help as best as I can. So we just removed all 12 clips from the roof rail. There are six on each side. So we just slid each one forward, backward. You'll see in the video, come right out. So once the roof rails are out, you can then clean inside that groove, you know, really good. There's a lot of just leaves and debris in there. So we're gonna clean that out really good. Uh, the next step is we're gonna remove the antenna. At that point, the roof will pretty much, you know, Everything that we're wrapping will be accessible. So, um, all right, we're gonna remove the antenna next. So here we go. All right, cool. So now we're inside the car, getting ready to move the antenna where all the stuff is to remove the antenna. So we have to drop the headliner a little bit from the back. Uh, this particular vehicle, there's three clips up top. Uh, we're gonna remove those. That'll allow us to kind of gain access to the back of the antenna. We'll be able to remove the bolt and any wiring harness associated with the antenna. So. Uh, let's remove these three clips and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see what's going on in there but I'll just try to describe what's going on in there if you can't see so all right let's remove some clips using that panel popper clip tool all right these clips once they're pressed in they'll close up so once you remove the clip I just kind of you know sneak the pick in between these two layers and then you separate it and then it'll come right out so easy. Thanks Subaru. Not everyone's that easy, but Subaru's nice and easy. So we'll put those in the door cup so we don't lose them. Next step is to remove the nut on the back of the antenna. I can't really remember exactly what size it is, so we're going to get up there and check it out. We're going to remove these headrests. kind of easier to work around when the headrests are out, so I'll just put these in the front seat. Oh yeah, it's that big boy. Definitely like a 17 mil. So now this is when we just just keep trying different nuts and bolts or sockets until we find out the right one. So um, let's get rid of the toolbox, see if we can find a nice 17 mil. Yeah. All right, well, I was extremely wrong. It's not a 17 mil, it's a 22 mil. So Ralph knew it. <laughs> Ralph knew right off the back it was a 22 mil. So uh, yeah, 22 mil socket, that's all holding the antenna on. There's one harness clip that we unclipped um, and then it comes right off. So yeah, we're gonna pop her off now. Yeah, mother. No way. All right, cool. Got it. All right, so once some close up real quick. I'm gonna wait for Sydney to uh, focus in on this little guy. You see that? See that little white clip? Little white clip. Got to push those in first, and then it comes out. So just make sure you pinch both of those little clips, and then then you got yourself an antenna. That's the wiring harness we had it unclip. So. Now if you look at the roof, it's all ready to wrap. We're going to drop the sunroof. That's the last thing. Um, may have to remove that little wind pop-up thing. So I'm going to
gonna drop the sunroof and then we're gonna start claying this claying this mother down. So here we go. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Roof rails, antenna, this thing. For the three things we had to remove off this vehicle to allow us to wrap it nice and clean and easy. So, all right, we're gonna start claying this guy. We're gonna clay bar it to get all the contaminants off the clear coat, any uh, hard debris that is stuck in the clear coat will be removed with the clay. So, um, we're gonna go over the roof with a nice, fine water and soapy mixture. Uh, we're gonna use baby shampoo, because that's what you use to tint windows, and that's what we have here. So, we're gonna use a light baby shampoo and water mixture, and just clay off the entire roof and get it nice and smooth. The roof is all ready to be wrapped. We just got it all cleaned off. We clayed it multiple times, wiped it down. I got my little squeegee in between front and rear gasket trim, windshield trim. Um, pretty spotless. I'll have Sydney, you know, just kind of show you inside the track compared to what it looked like before. Um, yeah, we cleaned all inside the sunroof groove, all around the antenna, all that, all that, you know debris prone area so uh, we measured the roof it's roughly like 62 inches by like 44 45 inches so we're gonna cut obviously a piece bigger than that we're gonna do probably a 68 by 48 piece um, that'll give us enough three four inches on each side to kind of work with and uh, not cut it too close so uh, we got our piece pulled out right here we're gonna cut it and then me and Ralph are gonna place that guy so here we go. All right, so when you're pulling the liner off, it's nice to have a second person helping you. It's almost impossible to do it by yourself unless you're rolling it onto the roof, which sometimes can pick up some debris and put it in the wrap. So it's always best, it's always best to have a second hand help you pull the liner off. All right, so when you're wrapping the roof, you basically want to pull out from each corner. You want to stretch it out. Okay, let's kind of like put it loosely on here first. All right, so this is what it looks like all loose, loosey-goosey. You can see all, all of the excess everywhere. If you try to squeegee this out, you're going to crease all this. It's going to look really bad, so you have to stretch it out. So see, see how we stretch it out. We kind of stretch it from like a triangle shape and that usually releases all the tension. So we'll have Ralph stretching from the passenger side. I'll be stretching from this side. We're each pulling out. Ooh, ooh, oh my God. Always like to pull it from the center. Look at that glass. Oh my gosh, that glass is insane. So we're gonna come in the back and we're gonna kind of do the same thing we just did in the front. We're gonna stretch out from the center, pull out to each corner. Oh my God, you basically want to make that glass. So now we're ready to squeegee it out. It looks, it may even look like it's squeegeed out right now because of how much glass that it looks like, but it's not. So we're gonna pull out our little card, fresh felt tip squeegee to reduce scratching. Um, and we're just gonna work our way from the center. I usually like to work from the back of the sunroof kind of out towards everything else. So. Uh, you don't ever want to start like on the edges or the corners, center out. Alright, so we have all the air squeegeed out of the vinyl. We're going to go over it with a heat gun just to make sure we didn't miss any little spots that down the road will become a problem. So we're going to go over the whole thing with a heat gun. Uh, after that, we're going to start trimming it up and tucking the corners and getting the sunroof cut out. Hey guys, it's Ralph the Rapper here. And uh, so Nick was over there showing you how we do a gloss black roof. I'm here to show you how we do a shark fan antenna if the car has one. 
Um, so granted, this is going to be much different than what he did. The general process is going to be the same. Make sure you clean it as best you can. Make sure you get rid of anything on there that doesn't have to be. For example, his roof moldings, here we have a rubber seal on the bottom. Some are a little bit bigger, or uh, some are a little bit harder to get off than others rather if the screws are too small. Luckily, these are just small Phillips head screws that can be taken out pretty easily. Um, taking this out will uh, ensure the fact that we can roll the vinyl underneath this edge right here so that it lasts. So I'm gonna take all these out, I'll start cleaning it up, and uh, we'll see where we go. Alrighty guys, so now that the piece is uh, you know, ready to uh, be prepped, you're gonna wanna make sure you get all the dirt off of it, wipe the edges, clean the underside as best you can as well. Uh, there are a couple ways you can go about wrapping these once you get started. Uh, some people will do them one piece, some people will do one piece with a seam in the back, some people will do an inlay with a second piece on top. That's what we're going to go with today, uh, just for the ease of the video. I think that'll be the best option for you guys doing this at home. Um, it will ensure that it just lasts as long as possible. Uh, like I said, there are other ways. You know, if you find your niche, you can definitely do that, but I'll be showing you the inlay with a second piece. So uh, to do the inlay, I'm going to use some knifeless tape here just so we don't cut the paint. Uh, I understand some of you at home may not have the tape. Uh, you can just hand cut that piece. Just be very, very, very careful. Um, today, since I do have this, I'm not going to take that risk. Uh, so we'll lay this out, get the black piece on there, and then I will show you guys how to pre-stretch the second piece. Alrighty guys, so I have the knifeless tape on here. I'm gonna go over real quickly just how this stuff works in case you do decide to use it. Um, essentially, it's just a piece of tape with a string in the middle of it. So you wanna lay it out to where you want your desired inlay to be. Um, just overlap them where you want them to cross. Of course, make sure you pull the top one first. So you have it ready. I'm gonna take my piece of gloss black and uh, I'm just gonna lay it over top of that. So luckily that doesn't have to be too much stretching going on here. It's a pretty flat piece. You just work that around all your edges. Get everything down tight. Now I'm gonna go back and trim away just some of this black excess so that I can get to the tape, the necklace tape that is behind it. Alrighty. So now I'm gonna just lay this piece down flat at the beginning of the tape grab the edge of it and then as you pull it up to where it is place your thumb over where the vinyl meets the tape you're just going to do a quick snap it'll break it loose you can see now that they're separated and you can just continue to pull that down and it'll cut your piece all the way through for you so just do that to both sides and then we'll be good to go on the rest of it Alrighty guys, so now that we're here at our final step, wrapping the top part of the fin white, um, what you're going to want to do here is pre-stretch the piece you're about to use. Um, it's definitely easier with two people, however you can do it with one. I'm going to show you how you do it, how to do it with just one person. You're going to want to tack the piece you're using onto some type of clean surface. I'm using the workbench here. Um, and you're going to want to heat it. So tack that one side down and just kind of start heating the piece evenly. It doesn't need to get too hot, just hot enough to stretch it. Avery's pretty thin, so it really doesn't take much. Now you're just gonna wanna pull the piece back, give it a nice little pre-stretch, and just kinda let it hold there for a second. It will just want to naturally re-shrink. You can pull it out from the sides too, a little bit. Wherever you really want that to you know, re-shrink around. Um, I find it easier now that it's already tacked on this back piece to kinda just use that as my second set of hands kind of hard you don't want any fingers here in the middle of it when you go to do it but just push your piece up and you'll be good to go so now that you have this you know you really necessarily may not know where to go next or what to do uh, but the best thing to do is to get rid of all the excess so to do that you're going to want to pull the material out um, from wherever you're trying to wrap so take the back immediately and just pull that back and down as well until you can tack it to this bottom corner. So you can already see it's a little bit more, uh, you know, glassed up there. There's really no more fingers. You just pull it up real quick in the front, and it already looks good to go. So now you can pretty much just take your thumb, slide the majority of that air out of there. You may end up with a little finger here. Just pull it up, get that air out. Do the same for the top. 
and you already have one half of your antenna done. So the other side is over here. Just pull this up. If you uh, wrinkle it or do anything while you're stretching the other side, you can hit it with a little bit of heat again. Um, that'll help it kind of return to where it was. You may not need to, Avery's pretty resilient. Uh, so I'll just pull that back and down. Do that again. And we'll get all that out of there. Cool deal. So now we're going to trim up some of this excess and uh, start doing all of the edges. Just as we did on the other side, or on the other, the inlay rather. Pull it up here. This is a little bit different because it's going to be a piece of necklace tape that is not tacked to anything. So you're still going to want to have the same method. Just pinch that piece once it's folded over. Give it a tug or two. Break it loose. And we're just going to pull it up to there. Now remember the tape didn't go all the way up through. So that's what I was saying. How it would be a little bit weird. No real ending point. That's okay. Just get the old knifeless tape out of there. Might just have to wiggle it a little bit. It'll, it should come out. Lay down that new edge. Alrighty. Now we're going to do the same for the other side. A little confusing with two pieces on there. The old one always gets stuck to my hand. Cool. So now you can generally see we have almost the whole antenna done. We got the back sides. Now what's left is to do the uh, the underside and the side or the front edges rather. All right, guys. So the front is really the only difficult part when it comes to the rest of the edges. Uh, it's a little bit round to just lay it around and hope it sticks. Uh, you'll end up with a lot of excess, a lot of fingers there. Um, I find it's best to just do a couple pie cuts, fold it over cleanly, um, stretch it underneath so you don't see those overlaps. Um, and then that'll give you definitely the best finish. So I'm going to go across here on the tip and maybe cut it three times. So I'll do one, two, and we'll do three. So I'm going to start then here with my one side. Clear up a little bit more of this. All right, so you're going to fold the one side in. Now you'll see you have two little tabs. Grab the one tab and just kind of pull it, stretch it around. You can stretch it far enough so that that little crease is not seen. Do it one more time, and then a third. So from the top, it looks perfectly fine and clean. The bottom, it's folded over right here, but you can go back and trim that up. That's just going to make sure it lasts for you. Um, it's the best way I've found to do it. Uh, like I said, you'll find other ways to do it. Um, that's just what we do. So now that everything is tucked cut or not cut rather but tucked and folded around the sides you're ready to go up into a final trim you really don't need much excess here left over especially having that rubber piece going back one so I'm just gonna find an edge here and just kinda glide my blade along that and get rid of all of that from over there I'm gonna go back over here and do the same thing All right, now that the roof is nice and glassed up, all squeezed out, ready to trim up, we're gonna start by cutting out the sunroof. Um, we're gonna leave like a little two inch edge around the whole thing so we can roll that all the way down and again, make sure all the, all the white's covered. So um, we're gonna cut that out and then we're gonna cut the side roof rails out. Um, I'll show you how to do that safely so you don't cut the car up. So we're gonna start with the sunroof. I like to get my blade, you know, like like one click out. One click out's always a safe bet. So we'll do one click out, and then we'll start just from the center. We're just gonna glide. We're just gonna make basically the same pattern or the same shape as the sun. We'll go on the other side. Now that we have the sunroof cut out, we're just gonna use our wrap glove use my little thumb and we're just gonna chase the whole entire edge around slowly but surely. 
You want to just make sure you're not skipping any crucial spots or you're going to leave some air gaps. So you're going to chase it down. I like to always knock the corners out. Just kind of chase your fingers down in it. You'll feel where it stops. And then you know you don't have to go anymore. I'm not making any All right, so when we cut these roof rails out, there's a lot of negative space under here. As you can see, you see in there, you know, a lot of negative space in here. So we're gonna actually use that to our advantage and cut in between that gap. So we don't cut into the paint. We're not leaving any knife marks anywhere. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're just gonna glide our blade about a little bit more than halfway over all the way down the hole whole bad boy. Make sure you always got fresh blades too. Make sure you're always snapping your blade. You always want that fresh sharp blade or you're gonna have a bad time. So we're gonna cut all the way to the end. I like to pull it up, cut it out. Bada boom, bada bing. This is all trash. Boom, all right. Now that you cut your edge, I wouldn't immediately start going ham doing the corners all all right now i would just kind of lightly roll that top edge over so you don't create any weird air gaps or anything so we're kind of just going to work out the center of the roof rail first we're going to leave the edges um, open so we can get those corners nice and glossy so um, we're going to do this to the other side and then we're going to start doing the corners all right now we're going to tuck our edges so to tuck these edges i'm going to use my slammer you can really just use any, you can use another one of these. I just like using these. And then your card. So we're going to use this to lift the seal back. And then we're going to use this to tuck the vinyl in. Very, very simple. So we're gonna, I like to start from the center and kind of work your way to, the, to yourself. Or just work one side to the other. It really doesn't matter. But don't do the corners yet. We're going to do the corners last. So here we go. Move this out of the way. All right, so you can see our corner is like pretty bare right here. <coughs> We're gonna stretch her down. We're gonna attack it right on right on the main corner of the corner. We're gonna use our other card. Work all the excess away from it. everybody that concludes our first how-to video on the a plus channel um, hopefully you learned a thing or two today if not please comment what you didn't learn what you want me to tell you that I that I didn't include in the video I may have missed a few things I'm pretty sure I try to get everything head-on so um, yeah this video is more so directed towards people who are trying to wrap their own car they want to tackle a little weekend project want to add a little Add a little spruce up to their roof real quick. Um, you could always come by the shop and get it done. You know, me and Zach are more than glad to do it for you. But uh, if you want to try it yourself, you can come on by the shop. We'll sell you some gloss black. Just let us know how much you need. Um, we have all the tools here. You know, we're more than welcome to help you out. So, uh, yeah, gloss black roof looks sick. Adds some nice contrast to a light colored car. Makes it look a little lower sometimes too. Usually at night. I've always said that. So, I don't know. Yeah, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. We're almost at 600 subscribers. We might be at 600 subscribers by the time this video is done. I don't know. Next step, almost 1,000. Once we get to 1,000, big things are happening. So, might even give away some free stuff. Like, we'll send you a, we'll send you a plaque. All of you plaques. All right, let's go get some B-roll. <laughs>